Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're in Portland, Oregon, fishing the Multnomah Channel, part of the Willamette River for Spring Chinook. Now, if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf, and this is Angler West Television. We've launched on the Columbia River, but our goal is to catch Willamette River Spring Chinook. We're with guide Jack Glass with over 35 years guiding experience. Well, we're out here on the Columbia River, we're gonna go enjoy some spring salmon fishing on the Willamette River. We're gonna travel down about eight miles, turn run up into the Willamette River with about 200 of our closest friends, and we're gonna enjoy a great day springer fishing on here. Uh, nice weather, couldn't be any better. Let's go get them. Well, we came up here, this is kind of the, the height of the fishery through this time of year, all the way through downtown Portland. So we're down below Portland a little ways. We're gonna troll back down with the tide. Tide's running out right now. We like to troll with the tide. You see a lot of anglers. I didn't see any fish on yet, but as soon as we get dropped in, we'll have one on here pretty quick. Uh, there are a number of fish in the area right now, and uh, we got a real good opportunity here today. We're using a combination of uh, super baits and spinners today. The water's starting to warm up a little bit in the Willamette River, so just <laughs> looking more for a reaction bite. And uh, this time of year, too, when the water starts warming up, it's a great idea to run scents with the garlic base to them, like the Salmon Slammer or Garlic Plus. Both are a great choice. Generally, I try not to put it on the spinner blade itself, just put it on the body or even down on the hooks. And that seems to work out well. Zero the counter, always zero the counter with the weight at the, the rod tip. <clears throat> that way everybody's on the same page. We're going to use a flasher today. These are great big flashers with about a 12 ounce sinker. It'll spin around and we're going to use these type of baits. We're going to put some inserts on the inside. We're going to put some scent in there. Uh, these flashers activate, makes it spin really radically uh, to get the fish to bite. See what we can find. This stuff is all brined up and ready to go. I can smell it. The next boat can smell it. Everybody can smell it. It's really strong here. This is a special sauce. We can find out more about this sauce watching this show. We'll see how she does. I load that guy up like that. Take that rubber band, stick it in there. And I prefer using three two-watt hooks. Put them in a row just like that. But when they bite it, they hardly ever miss it. That's a good way to go on that thing. Let's stick it on that one. Let's try it. I brought the tuna this morning and inside of it has uh, <laughs> some monster bite as well as some krill and a whole bunch of garlic. It's good stuff. Okay, we're going to drop down. We're going to run down to 30 on our line counters. The line counter is a really nice feature to engage how deep we're going. We're in the 53 feet of water, but we're only gonna fish down to about 20, 25 feet. We'll find most of our salmon in that range. Down on the bottom down here's lots of sturgeon down here, but we're not targeting those today. So we're running in deep water, but we're gonna be suspended fishing. That's what makes this technique so effective. And salmon are cruising at that 20, 25 foot range. So 30 on the line counter, 12 ounces, that puts us right in the spot. Braided line, 65 pound. We don't need 65 pounds, but it's just strong, it's reliable. You know, when we get all our gear hanging out there, we got $25 worth of stuff hanging out there. So if you hang up on the bottom by using 65 pounds, you pretty much can always get your gear back. We don't want to lose too much of it. As long as it's green, you're fishing with a super bait. <laughs> no, uh, we use green and red. There's a, you know, these are metallics. I do like the metallic ones. I do have some solid ones. It's been one of my favorites this year. We've done really well with that metallic green. Uh, it seems to be a good one. I don't remember the name of it, but if it's green, I like it. Uh, 35, let's go 35 on this. We'll adjust accordingly as I start seeing some. This just air bubbles in here. I can reduce a lot of that out of there. These Garmin electronics are really good. Boy, you can really see this chirp technology. It's chirp is really effective. You can really spot fish with that thing. In fact, just as I was turning, there was one of the flashers on one of the bow rods was just showing up on there. Another really good technique I like is fishing the super bait with the fish flash. The triangular fish flash is in line and this stays in line, so it makes a really nice tight spinning action. I have really good luck fishing this combination as well. It doesn't always have to be the real big real action. Sometimes the inline action adds a lot of contrast to it in the water and they seem to bite at it really well. So I like running these two together as well.
We're on the Willamette River near downtown Portland, Oregon, fishing for spring Chinook salmon. Today our confidence lures are original super baits loaded with canned tuna, scented heavily with garlic. For some weird reason, it seems like the warmer the water gets, the more and more garlic turns on as a key bait scent. Seems to work time and time again. Yeah, it really, really yet. All right, fish, come on. There's one. Oh, that was a sturgeon. They're awful deep. Yeah. 64 feet of water. Oh, yeah. There's some sturgeon down there on the bottom. We're in 61 feet. So we're looking for fish in this mid range. We got some air bubbles in. There's some turbulence. I can back the gain down to, to reduce some of the air bubbles and clean that up. Let's see what our tide's doing right now. I can go to my navigation right here. Shows tides. Select my tide. Nearby stations. Okay, nearby. We're, we're closer to Vancouver than we are St. Helens. So let's go to uh, let's go to nearby stations. How about Vancouver? Vancouver tide. See, we're at low tide. We're just starting to come in right now. This makes it really easy. It's 7 a.m. and tide's starting to come in. It really makes it nice. You can pull up these tides all over the area. And it, it's already in this because of our GPS location. It'll already find the tides in your area. This makes it really, really nice for your navigation. You want to relate to what's happening in your area. I like the incoming tide. It does help push fish in. Uh, they move on that tide because the tide lessens. We're 100, well, we're 80 miles from the ocean. So we don't get an influenced tide where it actually flows in. If anything, as the current's running out, it slows down and rises a little bit, but the fish will move forward on that. As it's running harder, at the very bottom they'll move too, but mid-range they don't move around a whole lot. I like having the top of the tide or the bottom of the tide usually is one of the better bite periods. So we're just coming out of our low and we got an incoming here, so it should be productive today. I'm, I'm optimistic to find some. We're just getting started. Let's see what we got here. A lot of boats out here. Haven't seen a net yet. We'll give it a little time here and it will be moving, I'm sure. If we don't see something. We're down here by the, the mouth of Willamette. The Willamette uh, runs into the Columbia River down there about two miles. And this is the head of Salvi's Island. Salvi's Island is one of the largest islands in North America that's surrounded by fresh water. It's about 17 miles long. Inside this channel is called Multnomah Channel. We're gonna slide down into here and see what we can find down here. We spent an hour out here out in front, didn't see a fish, so I'm anxious I gotta move. Uh, if you don't find them, I'm not graphing them on my good electronics. Uh, let's go find fish and see what we can do. We're going to go down the channel. Mullima Channel is a natural channel around the island of Salvi's. Uh, it wasn't man-made. It's always been here. It's probably been dredged out a little bit with a lot of the logging practices years ago. But it's a, it's a natural channel. All fresh water around it. There's a lot of agriculture on Salvi's Island and also big wildlife refuges. Uh, wetland, waterfowl, uh, a little bit of bird hunting, uh, you know, pheasants, that sort of thing at one time. Uh, but a lot of agriculture, a lot of farming out here. It's about four and a half miles wide and about 17 miles long. Uh, this channel narrows down down here. I do like it. Uh, we do well in here because it narrows it down. And uh, we'll, we'll get down here. We're kind of shallow, also 20 feet of water, 25 feet of water. And we'll see what we can find. We didn't see much out in front, so we're looking. You gotta drive around and look once in a while. Okay, on the bow rods, we're gonna drop in at 25, and we'll do 30 on these rods back here. Two five. Two five on the bow. We're dropping in down here. It's, uh, it's 34 feet instead of 60 feet where we're fishing out in the main channel. I like this in here. It's a little bit shallower, narrow, more confined. Uh, there have been a few caught in here this week. We'll see what we can find as we move down through here. Reel them up. Fish on. Here we go. Fish on. All right. Watch this turn. You know, I picked up that super bait. Garlic. Loaded with the garlic on it. They're liking garlic. Good, buddy. Great. Just like a professional. There you go, sideways. There you go. See, that keeps that flat.
I seen a fin. I thought I saw a fin on there. We're all happy. No, there's no fin on it. That's a hatchery. Under your boat. Yeah, last place to hide. Oh. Oh, Jason. Back to Portland, Oregon. I'm Justin Wolf. We've made a move out of the main stem of the Willamette River and into the Boltnova Channel, which has turned out to be the right move. First thing I do is undo this. Gotta get rid of that. <laughs> ah! He's got a fin. Yeah. Probably, probably. <laughs> got a seal bite on him, too. Yeah. Nope, just one of them. Shouldn't hurt him too bad. Yeah. Sweet. It's a nice one. Pretty fish. Got some seal bites in him. Sea lion, probably. But he's got the fin. He's a good one. Looks healthy. Yeah. Look at that bite. He's got a big gash on this other side. Look at that bite. Woo, that's, that's fresh, good. too. Oh, okay. Sweet. Well, that was fun. Good job, bud. Thanks, Jack. Right on. Get another one. I'll put some of this tuna in this uh, Max Lure flasher here and get some added attraction. I just rigged up this Max flasher. This is like the 360 type flashers that have gotten really popular with the big fin. What's unique about this is we get to insert scent on the inside of this thing. So it's going to have a massive scent trail come off of this. I am going to run a spinner behind it. I made up a little spinner and I'm going to put a little bait on that spinner. Let's see how well that works behind that. So this is something new. I haven't tried this guy yet. I'm excited to see what we can do with it today. Yeah. That's where they're at. So we're fishing rods suspended. We're not right on the bottom. We got them up a little ways. They'll come up good for that bait. That big scent trail coming off there. They can, they'll follow it for yards before they'll grab it a lot of times. Track it down, grab it. Yeah, I can, oh, I, yeah, I can tell that's go. a hatchery. There we go. We got fish yeah. on. Fish on. Yes, sir. Yeah. These are the smaller one, but that's fish. Looking good, Steve. Looking good. All right. Oh, he's a little bigger. Yeah. He, he realized he's hooked now. Now he, yep. Looking good, Steve. Looking good, buddy. Nice. Yeah, I realize he's hooked. Not happy. It's looking good, Steve. Looking good. Yeah. Oh, 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 settle down. Settle down. Settle down. <laughs> he's going back. In. Yeah, we don't want get too excited. Take your time. Oh, look at him, he's all fighty. <laughs> they feel that flasher hitting their tail and they just go, oh! They think they're <laughs> getting chased. I like it at an angle. It keeps that flasher down. And that flagger, flasher gets straight up in the air, that's when it can get off. So that angle is really helpful. <laughs> Looking good. He'll come. Oh, he's got it all wrapped up on him now, so. That's good, more points of contact. <laughs> Get in the boat. Oh, he's got a fin. Oh, cut yeah. I, I saw it. Oh, darn it. Well, he's tugging on the line. The tug's a drug. We like it. I ain't about ready. Should I lift up? Yeah, you can whoop him. Pull on him now, yeah. Yeah. 
I unsnap it from the flasher. Yeah. There you go. And you can take the rod. There you go. He got seal bites on him too. Seals are eating good. Yeah, the seals are eating way better than we are. Are we gonna want, you go, we gonna want him around this way? There you go. Yay! Woohoo! There you go, Steve. There's Another go one. back. There's a good one. There he goes. Next one will be a keeper. Well, right here we got a nice selection of the Brad's products. We have the Super Bait, which is the banana looking long curved one. These have been out for quite a while. And then the cut plugs came out. They're both very effective. Uh, I like the Super Bait because I think I get a little bit more bait in there right now and I want a lot of scent. I do find I use a lot more cut plugs a little bit more in the fall, especially in the ocean. That really works good out there in the ocean. So. But they like all of these. The color combinations they put on these are really, really nice. Um, we're happy with all of them. Now, they do come with a foam-filled center, so a lot of times you can inject a real nice scent in there. Use some Procure good scent, some of the uh, Bloody Tuna, some of the Anise, or even the Super Gel. You can stick that in there by itself. You don't have to load it with bait as we are. Uh, but these are really great baits. They make a nice spin. We did put our own hooks on them. I do like the, the double or triple hooks on them. That's a good way to go and always put a bead underneath it and that allows it to spin. These are set with three beads and a bobber stop to leave the hooks quite a ways behind it. So that, that aids to the hooking capability and getting those fish in. We've been fortunate today, everything we've hooked we've landed. So by rigging this way, it seems to work pretty well. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's episode where we're catching spring chinook on super bait stuffed with tuna, but not just any tuna. Before we go back to the river, let's learn exactly how that tuna was put together with Steve Lynch from Procure. Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make the tuna compound that we're using during the show. And what it is, it's one can of tuna uh, packed in oil. We just drain the oil off, which is right here. Then we add a little bit of the monster bite to it the krill powder and the krill is just an aquatic shrimp it's just a real mild shrimp scent and then we add a little bit of the uh, slamola uh, and the slamola does a couple of things it's a firming salt so it'll help firm the, the, the bait up uh, but it, it's got a, it's got a little bit of uh, uh, the monster bite in it as well so what I do is I'll mix it up like this and then we'll put just a little bit of uh, the garlic buddy tuna and what I'll do is in my tray I'll mix up half and half so that way I can have a garlic base and then just a regular tuna base. So on this side we were doing just a little bit of the garlic tuna in the oil and then he was also adding a little bit of the salmon slammer of the gel. And traditionally, the gel is only made to go on artificial baits, but it just helps firm uh, the tuna up some. So all I'll do is mix this one up. And so this is a heavy garlic scent. And then this one here, this other one, he just did a regular tuna oil. And this, provided you keep it out of the sun and keep it cold, you know, at the, at the end of the day, you can put it back in the refrigerator and, and use this for up to two weeks, provided it's in a, a decent container and, and kept out of the main heat of the sun. Uh, but on the show, the, what worked best for us was, was the tuna with the garlic. And all we were doing was just packing the super baits hard and heavy with the tuna and then using the salmon slammer on them and loading up the belly side of the super baits. All right, guys, I'm looking at the tide here right now, and we're about an hour away from high tide, so this is a really good time to be trolling. We're in the right spot. I'm fishing with confidence. We're in the top of the tide. Let's drop in here and see if we can pull another one. Here yeah. we go. Same count. <laughs> 22 feet right there. Electronics and heat. That's pretty easy. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that, and all of a sudden you turn around. Boom. Any moment. Feisty. See what I got on the wheel. 
that's what happens. Right. Keep the rod low to the side. Be a Another native. Oh! He does it. Oh! Ah! That 12 foot rod. Three, three natives we today. Haven't, we haven't got a keeper yet. Dang it. <laughs> Sweet. Too many fans. How deep you ready now? That one is a 25 on the line counter. Pretty shallow. We're yeah, not hitting. Yeah, yeah. We're not on the bottom. No, because it's deep here. Yeah. Basically, the run this year I thought's been okay, not great, but it feels like you can catch them just about every time we come out here. We have some action, at least a bite or two, to three or four or five bites. Uh, I haven't had a big 10 fish day. Some folks have, uh, but there's uh, we seem to have some action each time. It does seem like there might be a good bite down a little lower and then a couple days later a little bit higher. Those fish do move through, so you want to move up with them a little bit. Just as we did, we just caught one. We've turned around and by gosh, these guys over here had one on the same spot. So when you find them, don't leave the spot right away. Stick around there for a little bit. Uh, but it run overall, I hope it's gonna be better next year, but we're still catching them this year, so we're, we're pleased with that. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now, get out there and do some great fishing.